Hey, Tamara, congrats on finally marrying my brother. Your dress is cute, by the way. Oh, hello, Jessica. Thanks for your kind words. By the way, have you seen my dress? Seriously, it's on a whole other level compared to yours. And check out this lavish fur that gracefully drapes around my off-shoulder design. It's nothing short of pure magnificence, don't you think? Um, well, I guess that design also looks great. But hey, don't you think the dress is a bit too white? I don't want to steal the spotlight at your own wedding, but this dress is just too adorable to resist. It's like it was begging me to wear it, you know? Like it's my destiny or something. I couldn't say no to that. Hope you're not mad. Tamara, no hard feelings, right? Honestly, it's quite rude for someone else to decide to wear a white dress on my wedding day. Out of all the colors, you had to go with white? You could have picked any other dress, you know? Oh, give me a break, Tamara. What's with all this drama? Are you really gonna make me go home and change into another dress? That would be beyond mean, and it would totally ruin our relationship as sisters-in-law. You wouldn't want that, right? Yeah, I suppose. Well, it's settled. All right, your wedding is the perfect opportunity for me to snatch my future husband. So obviously, I have to look my absolute best today. That's the only reason I bothered showing up at your pathetic wedding in the first place, can't you see? Just kidding with you. <laughs> oh, so you came to my wedding just to scout for potential romantic interests? Wow, that's news to me. Duh, like I actually care about you and my idiotic brother that much. Anyway, let's get the important stuff. Do you happen to have any friends who are ridiculously wealthy? I'm not talking about regular rich, I mean super mega rich, you know, the cream of the crop. I never settle for anything mediocre, always aiming for the best. Oh, I'm really sorry to disappoint you, but I don't have any friends who meet your oh so high standards. So, good luck on your noble quest to find your Prince Charming. You might need it. I'm afraid I can't be much help in that department. Oh wow, just when I thought you couldn't be any more useless, Tamara, you proved me right. But hey, it's not surprising considering your poor background. What can I really expect for someone like you, right? How did someone with such an average face and a skinny body like yours Managed to snag my brother. Well, I guess you two are a perfect match, since he's not that impressive either. And I bet your friends are probably just as poor and shabby as you. <laughs> Goodness, look at you and your delightful condescending attitude. Bless your heart. Anyways, I've got places to be and people to see. So I'll catch you later, okay? Ta-ta. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. How dare you just walk out of me like that? I haven't even finished saying my piece. For crying out loud, can even handle a simple conversation, huh? Tamara, you're beyond rude. It's like you have zero manners. Tamara! Oh, Tamara, now that you've married into my precious family, why don't you start pulling your weight and help me and my darling daughter out? Don't even think for a second that just because you're living in a separate house with my son that you can avoid your duty as a daughter-in-law. No, 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 no. That's simply not the case. You hear? Wait. Hold on, Nancy. What are you even talking about? I'm totally lost here, and I just don't get it. Can you please explain it to me again? Oh, spare me the act, will you? I see right through your pathetic lies and deceptive games. You're just trying to have my son all to yourself, aren't you? You want to manipulate him and turn him into our, your obedient little lapdog. Well, well, well. Look at what we have here. A wicked and cunning woman in disguise. Um, Nancy? I think there's a serious misunderstanding going on here. Just to clarify, I have absolutely no intentions of doing that at all. It's all a big mix-up, trust me. Since you don't claim you don't have any of those thoughts, why don't you prove it to me? Here's an idea. Since I'm a little too busy for it today, how about you take care of making lunch for my precious daughter? If you want to whip up some food and drop it off at my place by 12, I wouldn't want my little angel to starve, so make sure you show up at the right time, got it? 
So, let me get this straight. You've been blowing up my phone for nearly an hour just to ask me to cook for your daughter? Come on, you're desperate to prove your worth to this family, right? Well, here's your golden opportunity. It's your chance to shine. Unless, of course, you'd prefer to see your cute and kind sister-in-law starve herself to death? Also, you can get your greedy hands on her inheritance? Whoa, whoa. Hold on a second, Nancy. I think you're taking things a bit too far here. Let's calm down and take a step back, okay? Wow, you truly are a wicked one, Tamara. My son should have known better than to marry the kind of woman like you. Just a friendly reminder, it was me who agreed to this marriage, so getting my son to divorce your pathetic self would be a piece of cake. Fine, I'll go ahead and make her something to eat. It's not really a big deal, to be honest. Hey, Tamara. Is this what you have the audacity to present me as food? This sorry excuse for a meal is repulsive. It makes pig slop look like a gourmet delicacy in comparison. I can't believe you have the nerve to serve me the abomination as my lunch. It's an absolute crime, Tamara. A crime against my taste buds and my dignity. Do you take pleasure in torturing me with such slop? What are you talking about? I specifically made chicken curry, your favorite dish. Can you jog your memory, please? The last time you visited my place, you polished off an entire plate of it and even requested seconds. Surely you remember that, right? <laughs> Maybe my taste buds took a hit that day because this is definitely not what I'd call human food. But hey, I'm a generous and considerate woman, so I'll let it slide. Gotta keep up the good vibes with my lovely sister-in-law, right? Anyway, I've got a burning question for you. That house you and my brother are living in, is it a rental or do you guys actually own it? It looks old, quite spacious, so it's passable. Passable? What do you mean? Hey, forget about the small stuff. Just spill the beans and answer my question already. Is that place you guys are living in a rental or do you actually own it? Oh, well, I don't rent this house. It's actually the house that I inherited from my late grandmother. So I'm the owner. Uh, why do you ask? Wait, what? So that massive house is actually yours? I never saw that coming. I thought you were broke as a joke, crashing on the streets or something. <laughs> anyway, you know what? This is the perfect moment because I've got something I've been dying to ask you. Oh, okay. What is it then? The thing is, I'm also getting itch. Can you even handle the excitement? But let's be real. It's not too surprising, right? Just take a good look at my drop-dead gorgeous curvaceous body. Who in their right mind would dare say no to that? And let's not forget about my irresistible charm and my direct approach with men. You know how they simply can't resist me, right? It's like I have a magnetic pull or something. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's amazing news. So, do tell. Who's the lucky guy this time round? Is it the same man you mentioned before? The one you had an affair with? I remember you talking about him once. I'm curious to know all the details. Oh, come on. It wasn't some scandalous affair. We just happened to meet in a slightly unconventional way. That's all. It's all about true love, you know. But no, it's not him. Well then, I guess... Maybe the guy who approached you recently? Nah, you silly goose. It wasn't some random other thing. I spotted his intense gaze and made the first move. But guess what? It's still not him. There's a whole different guy in this picture this time around. Well, who then? Hey, Tamara, you're getting really nosy here. But hey, if you're dying to know, I guess I have no reason to keep it a secret anymore. Check it out. It's the guy I met at a speed dating event. Turns out, he's the son of some wealthy man. Can you believe it? Wow, really? That's awesome. I'm happy for you. That's right. I'm having a shotgun wedding with a rich dude. Can you believe it? 
I bet you're green with envy, huh? While you're stuck with my dirt poor brother, I go out there and snag myself a man who's like 10,000 times better off financially. You know what they say, right? Dumb people marry for love. Well, smart people marry any rich guys they come across. Classic, right? Wow, seriously? Because I've never ever heard such an enlightening saying in all my years. That must be some groundbreaking wisdom you just shared there. You've truly expanded my knowledge, Jessica. Mind-blowing. Come on, Tamara. Are you mocking me right now? Anyway, check this out. I'm also pregnant with this child. Yep, that's my secret weapon to keep a wealthy guy all to myself. Pretty genius move, don't you think? Gotta play those cards right. That's great. I'm genuinely happy for you. So if you don't mind me asking, when did the speed dating event happen? I'm curious to know the timeline of how everything unfolded. Well, it was about three months ago. You guys only met three months ago and you're already jumping into marriage? Wow, I must say, I feel really sorry for him and his family already. Talk about rushing things. Good luck with that, I guess. What? What do you mean by that? Nothing. So, did you break up with the other guys? Oh, not yet. They all adore me so much, I can't bring myself to shatter their precious little hearts with the truth. You know, how utterly kind-hearted and considerate I am, right? Always putting others before myself. That's just who I am. But let's get real here. My marriage to a wealthy man was bound to happen. I'm just darn lovable. But you know what truly satisfies me? Money and loads of it. Anyway, let's shift gears and talk about your house. Tell me about it. Wait, hold up. What's the deal with my house? Why are we even talking about it? Oh, stop joking around. You know what I'm referring to, don't you? Look. I'm going to get straight to the point then. I want to use your house for my pre-wedding family introduction. What do you say? What? No way. Besides, didn't you just say that I was poor a few minutes ago? Excuse me? What the hell did you just say? Are you seriously telling me that you flat out rejected your own sister-in-law's request? Well... Don't you think the groom's family would rather see their future daughter-in-law's real home? Just saying, it might make more sense to them, you know? But my place is just a tiny apartment, and it's a bit of a mess. Are you honestly suggesting that I bring my future spouse there? That's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. You can always tidy the place up. Besides, won't they find it strange if they're invited to the bride's brother's house? Don't be too concerned. I'll just tell them if it's my family's place instead of yours. How does that sound to you? And what if they find out the truth? What are you going to do then? Are you really that clueless? As long as you and your husband keep quiet, it'll be just fine. No one will find out about it, all right? Considering that you're getting married and will soon be sharing a home with your spouse, Pretending just for the sake of the introduction won't bring any real solutions. Frankly, it seems like a pretty bad idea to me. Once we're married, he'll be mine. Plus, I'm also pregnant with this child, so nothing bad will ever happen. I don't know, Jessica. It's just not that simple. Oh, come on! You married my brother, remember? That automatically makes you a part of his family. So quit being so selfish when it comes to your own damn family. If you're so concerned, why don't you just hand over your house to me once and for all, huh? What are you trying to say there? I'm a bit confused. Oh, come on. You totally get what I'm getting at, right? Just hand me your house and all our problems magically disappear. It may be an old shack, but I'll graciously accept it. No worries. Yep, that's such a genius plan. And I'm sure mom will absolutely adore the idea. No, I can't do that. This house has sentimental value to me. It belonged to my great-grandma. It's been passed down to me. Don't you know? Once you're married, everything belongs to the husband's family. So your house is also my house. I've never heard of such a rule. Well, you better get this through your thick skull. 
What's yours is ours. Got it? So it's decided then. Next Sunday, I'm dragging my fiancé and his family to your place. Oh, and make sure you make a fancy and adorable feast for us. And obviously, make sure you give me all the credit for cooking those dishes. Oh, and don't forget to swap those hideous curtains you have. They're so repulsive, I can even bear to look at them. But this isn't right, Jessica. We're counting on you, sister-in-law. Don't disappoint us. Bentley, are you there? There's something I want to talk to you about. Hey, Tamara. I'm right here. What's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? Your sister just texted me with some outrageous request. She's getting hitched and wants to use our place for her family introduction. After I turned her down, she had the nerve to demand that I hand over my house to her. Can you believe her? What the heck? How did you even come up with such a ridiculous idea? I apologize on behalf of my sister. There's no way we're letting her use our house, let alone giving it to her. Absolutely not happening. Yeah, I know what you mean. Even if we say no, I have a feeling my sister and mom will still try to force their way in. You know them. They're persistent as hell and won't take no for an answer easily. It's something to be concerned about. So, what do you suggest? Should we move up our plan then? Do you really think so? Yes, I do. I know how much my sister's and mother's snide remarks get under your skin, and the constant harassment they've put you through is absolutely uncalled for. And let's not even get started on the stunt they pulled at our wedding. I've always been ready to defend you, but it's getting overwhelming for me too. So how about we put a stop to all of this once and for all? I mean, they're your mom and sister. Maybe I could tolerate the harassment directed at me, but I couldn't stand them disrespecting my grandma's house. Let's do it. We'll get back at them for all the bullying. Hey Tamara, did you manage to get everything sorted out like I asked? I really want my daughter's wedding to be a huge success, you know? Well, about that, Nancy. I was wondering if I can have a bit more time. We're thinking of remodeling to make it look more suitable for the couple. Wow, Tamara, you're actually going all out for my daughter? I totally misjudged you. You're such an amazing and cooperative daughter-in-law. Brentley definitely made the right call marrying you. But hey, don't forget, we still have wedding preparations to tackle. So let's hustle and get things done, all right? No worries, Nancy. I've got it covered. We'll be all set in three weeks. No problem. While I'm busy remodeling the house, why don't you start scouting for a wedding venue? That way we can tackle both tasks at the same time. You're so thoughtful, it's almost scary. Tamara, but yes, we'll leave the introduction to you and focus on the wedding. You can count on me. And remember, don't come round until the day of the wedding, okay? Sure thing. You know what? I must admit, you're the coolest and most supportive daughter-in-law ever. So wait, does that mean you and your sister are going to hand over your house to me too? That's seriously awesome of you guys. All right. I'm going to take that as a done deal. Once Jessica gets married, we're all moving into your place. Cool? Thanks a ton. You're the best. Tamara, what the hell have you done? Explain to me now. What? I thought you'd appreciate it. It's great, isn't it? Have you completely gone off the deep end? This level of insanity is just beyond words. What are you talking about? Can't you see how awesome I am? I've prepared a perfect vacant land and meal for you and Jessica. Surprise, surprise! What the hell happened to your house? It was supposed to be the spot where I can bring Jessica's fiancé's family, but now it's vanished into thin air? What do you have to say for yourself? Explain this to me immediately, you goddamn moron! I swear on my name, you're gonna pay for this, you wicked witch! I'm sorry if I upset you. Honestly, I just did what I thought was right. Can I have a word with the groom's mother? What kind of scheme are you hatching, you deceitful woman? Fine. 
go ahead and have your little chat with her. Just make sure you fully explain the whole damn situation to her, or else my daughter and I are going to be humiliated. Do you hear me? All right, all right. Leave it all to me. Hello. I'm the mother of the groom. Nancy mentioned that you have something you'd like to discuss with me. Oh, thank goodness you're here. Are you Philip's mother? It seems there's been a misunderstanding. I apologize, but my son's name is not Philip. Is it possible that you've mistaken my son for someone else? Oh, not Philip? My bad, sorry about that. So did Philip finally decide to ditch Jessica and stick with his wife? Or was it Luke? Maybe Mike? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have no clue what you're talking about. I'll give your mom her phone back so you can talk to her directly. Hey Tamara, what the hell were you thinking? Why did you list out all the guys my daughter has dated in the past? Are you out of your mind? Answer me this, what happened to your house? Why did it just vanish into thin air? Well, let me clarify it once and for all. The house didn't just magically disappear. It was actually demolished. We had a tight deadline and worked tirelessly, sacrificing a lot. But don't worry, everything's sorted now. Wait, what? You're telling me it's been demolished? Are you saying this for real? That's correct. My grandma had planned to demolish the house and convert it into apartments. The truth is, the house wasn't earthquake resistant and maintaining an old property like that was becoming quite challenging. Despite that, initially I wanted to keep the house because it held all my cherished memories of my grandma. However, as time went on, it became increasingly difficult to maintain the property and the expenses kept piling up. On top of that, Dealing with you, Jessica, and the constant disruptions you caused in my life made me reconsider. Your frequent appearances at my house, causing trouble and creating scenes, became unbearable. But, but you told me you were remodeling your house. Did you just make that up? Yeah, kinda. I didn't want you to tarnish the memories associated with my house. And I also didn't want to jeopardize my relationship with my husband. After much contemplation, I made the tough choice to demolish the house and leave it empty for the time being. How did this even happen? Why didn't you bother to tell me earlier? Is this some deliberate scheme to destroy our reputation, mine and my daughter's? I demand the unfiltered truth. Tell me, where on earth are you living now? I swear, I'll personally come over there and make sure you learn your lesson. Oh, it's nice to see that you still care about me. But don't worry, everything's under control. My husband and I have already secured new jobs and we'll be moving back to my hometown very soon. What's up with that doghouse sitting in the middle of the vacant land? Is this some messed up prank or what? Seriously, this is the most disrespectful thing I've ever come across. Oh, don't you just love it? I whipped up this masterpiece just for you and your daughter. It's a luxurious log cabin design, which, by the way, totally blew my budget. And check out that tag that it says, Nancy and Jessica. How fancy is that? Come on, admit it. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Oh, and let's not forget the cherry on top. I even prepared a tiny dish filled with the priciest dog food money can buy from the pet store. Can you believe it? I went all out for you guys. Listen up, you crazy woman. Drag your sorry butt back here pronto and let your delightful mother-in-law school you in a lesson you won't forget. I'm going to make sure you pay a hefty price for daring to disrespect me. I'll have my son divorce you and toss you aside like yesterday's garbage. And just to spice things up, I'll make him snap your legs like twigs and give you a good beating, since you clearly deserve it, you pathetic excuse for a mutt. Hey, hate to break it to you, but didn't you get the memo? You're no longer my mother-in-law, because both Brentley and I agree to sever ties with you. So good luck trying to boss Brentley around, because we all know he'll straight up ignore anything you have to say, haha. <laughs> Farewell, Nancy, 
And please, do me a favor and never cross paths with me again. A year and a half has passed since then. After moving to my hometown, my husband, initially bewildered by the rough around the edges fishermen in the neighborhood, is now even more beloved by them than I. The coastal town's breeze and the rich seafood suits him. The once pale complexion is now gone. Watching him joyfully devour grilled salmon for dinner makes me happier every day. We haven't been in touch with my mother-in-law or sister-in-law since the incident. We heard about the doghouse fiasco from the old neighbor. The house my mother-in-law and sister-in-law showed to Jessica's fiance's family was demolished, leaving only a lone doghouse. The dog food dish has a luxurious scent of fragua. The two were in a frenzy, repeatedly claiming it was harassment from the brother's wife. After getting a hint over the phone about my sister-in-law's questionable taste in men, her fiancé's family confronted her. Panicking, the two couldn't give a straight answer. Later, her fiancé's parents hired a detective to investigate my sister-in-law. Of course they found nothing but lies and a long line of men. This led to a requested DNA test for the baby, revealing it wasn't his at all. Sadly, the engagement was naturally called off. The baby's father turned out to be a man Jessica had a one night stand with. He was smitten with Jessica and delighted to have a child with her and they got married. However, the man's mother was a stubborn woman who adored her son. She was furious that her precious son was taken by an older woman with no morals and demanded they all live together. On the other hand, Nancy, upset about her daughter being taken, rented an apartment near the newlyweds and seemed to be in daily battles with the man's mother. Jessica, who planned to marry Rich and live a luxurious life, now seems exhausted from being bullied by her mother-in-law and handling household chores and childcare duties. Although Grandma's house has been demolished, we still keep many of her photos and her precious things, including the caramel-colored beam on the ceiling. It's a magnificent beam we incorporated into our newly built home as a memento of our beloved Grandma. We're determined to make our new house a wonderful and beautiful home, just like Grandma's. <laughs>